All right, all right, we are back. I'm here with my buddy Jason Thornton's camp here in Gross Tet, Louisiana. Now Jason operates a blog and an Instagram page he calls The Edible Outdoors Cook. Now Jason's dishes are nothing really over the top and what he tries to do is take wild game and make the cooking of wild game accessible to basically anyone. We're gonna be deer hunting over the next couple days, but I'll be honest, that's not what I'm here for. I'm here for the food. I came here to get a big old fat belly, have a good time, and eat everything Jason cooks. Let's go check out the camp. All right guys, this is our sunroom, our extra guest bed right here. This is where we spend the majority of our meals right here at the kitchen table. Follow me into the kitchen slash laundry room, cooking apparatus, refrigerator, able to do some laundry here, which is important for extended stays at the camp. The cooking cutlery is a montage of pawn shop experiences We've got probably a grand total of $9.99 hanging on the wall right here. <laughs> a whole list of our uh, hunting and fishing accomplishments. One of the most important rooms in the whole camp would be the pantry. And as you can see, we do keep it stocked. Food is very important in South Louisiana. On into the garage. A larger map for the aging eyes. We have the kids room here. The homage to my military experience. And here is a work in progress. We have what's going to end up being our game room, complete with a uh, ping pong table, Nintendo. So what I'll probably do is uh, remove the shelves, uh, paint this, put a ping pong table right in the middle, posters, dart boards. My wife and I envision this, you know, years and years ahead, where the kids will come meet us here. Maybe even bring the grandkids one day. So yeah, this is this is a, a work in progress right here. All right, we got Mama Edible Outdoors cook here. What you got, Mama? We have a Meshes King Keg, half chocolate, and half strawberry cream cheese. Now, how many places in the world can you eat a festive Mardi Gras cake called a King Cake the evening before a deer hunt? Just saying, just saying. Pray for me, y'all. Pray for me. All right, we're fixing to head out on the hunt. Now we're down here in Gross Tet, Louisiana, which is kind of close to Baton Rouge, and it's pretty interesting. We're in late January, and these deer have not rutted yet. In most places of the country, they've already done that long time ago, and they're back to their normal patterns. So Jason's fired up, he's been a patient hunter so far, and he's waiting on the right one. We're gonna go ahead and get out there. We're looking for a buck, 15 inch inside, or 19 inch main beam. There's plenty of them running around, so hopefully we can get one this morning. Well, that was the morning hunt. We had a good little hunt. We seen a few does, so we didn't get skunked. Not a lot, a lot of movement, but Jason said that the evenings are typically better than the morning, so we're hoping this evening to see plenty enough deer. Now, it's time to head back to the camp and get something in this belly. It's our third year at this camp. Love the camp, the proximity to my house. It's an hour drive from where we are. Plenty of game, we see deer all the time. Uh, it's a getaway for the whole family. My wife loves to come here to read. She's got her little swing set up. She gets out early, drinks her coffee, reads her book. KK loves the kids in the campground. There's a whole bunch of kids that come out. She sits in a stand with me, enjoys the entire process, hunting, harvesting, cleaning, cooking. It's just the total package for the entire family. At home, we would be on, something would be on, electronics would be going on, quality family time. It's just the ideal situation for us with hunting and being together as a family. In addition to being a hardcore hunter and fisherman, Jason also grows some of his own stuff and he's got some fruit trees. So there's some homemade fig preserves I'm going to put on this biscuit right here. Ain't going to be nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Don't be shy. No, I won't. Now 
the edible outdoors cook go check him out please do yourself a favor i'm telling you he takes wild game cooking and makes it accessible to just about anyone we've got an abundance of speckled trout redfish red snapper all this venison wild pork ducks take all this abundance of wildlife simplify it cook it like you would beef or chicken or fish and use these great recipes and use the whole animal enjoy what you've taken in the field all right, well, we're going to get back on these deer. See y'all in a bit. Well, we back at the camp. Hunt was pretty slow. We saw three deer. One got by us so fast I could barely get the camera on it. The other one got by so fast we didn't get anything on it. And then the little button buck hung out for a little while. He was kind of our little buddy. He was hanging out. I think he was trying to come eat at the camp with us, honestly. He smelled the king cake. That's what it was. He, you know. Well, I was being very observant and uh, Jared fell asleep while the buck was going behind us. And I turned around and it's probably, I don't know, it wasn't very big, maybe 150 inches, maybe 155. Uh, in, the, in the process of turning around and looking at the buck, I did wake up Jared, so he was able to see the tail end of the deer, so. First of all, he's lying, <laughs> okay? I was not sleeping. I was playing on my phone, okay? Instagram, buddy, get it right. All right, guys, tonight we'll be cooking uh, some venison sausage creole. It's a recipe I developed a couple of years ago. It's tomato-based with smoked sausage. I love those flavors combined. Phenomenal. We're gonna use some bone broth, some tomato sauce, rotel, roux, onions and peppers, a little Cajun seasoning, and my favorite, smoked sausage. We're gonna brown off our sausage here and a little bit of cooking oil. So we added the, uh, the chopped onions, bell peppers, and parsley. And then we're gonna add one can of rotel tomatoes. We're gonna let that stew for about 10 minutes. So we added back in our smoked sausage. We'll cook this down for a couple of minutes, get it all incorporated. So now we're gonna add one can of tomato sauce, about one cup of venison bone broth, straight from my kitchen. So what I did there was I made the venison bone broth, roasted the bones with some vegetables, cooked it down in water, reduced it to about half, and then what I did was I took the venison bone broth and I froze it in ice cube trays, took them out of the ice cube trays when I was finished, and then put them in Ziploc bags. That way you can use the exact amount that you need when you're cooking. So we're gonna add exactly one tablespoon of roux. This is the store-bought roux that we use. If you want, you can make your own roux. Stir slowly. All right guys, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna make my world famous fried blueberry pies. The blueberry filling I'm gonna use here is some homemade blueberry jam that I got from my backyard. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna roll out this store-bought pie crust. You don't wanna dust your uh, cutting board, roll it out just a little bit. If you don't do this, then the pie crust will be too thick for those pies. All right, now we're just gonna use a bowl as a guide to cut the pie crust. Reform it, roll it back out. So we have four pies here, and we're gonna add this homemade blueberry jam filling to each pie. Now you wanna make sure that you have room on the edges to fold over and crimp your pies. And what you probably wanna do is make sure that you have enough left over for biscuits tomorrow. And now that we have precise measurements for the filling on each pie, we'll fold them over and crimp them. So we're gonna add a little water to the edges fold them over and seal them. All right, here we have the finished product. Smoked sausage creole over a bed of rice. Man, if you guys would have smell-o-vision, 
Show up in gross tet, we'll feed you. So now we're gonna slide our pies with the oil, just heat it up to about 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Cook them to their nice golden brown. This is what you're looking for, the color, a golden brown. And one of those. And top it off with some fresh berries. And that is a fried blueberry jam hand pie. Ooh, ooh. Dip it in some of that. Mm. I feel like uh, what Fred Sanford. This is the big one. Oh, it's the big one. I'm coming, Elizabeth. I'm coming to see you, honey. Jason, done me in. That's it. I'm done. That just goes to show you, you know, when the hunting's slow, it's important to have the camp too, because that's where you really get to spend time with the folks that you care about. And for Jason, it creates a stronger bond between him and his family. And for me personally, it was all about the food anyway. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Duck Camp YouTube channel, like this video, and click your notifications so you know when we put out a new one. We're gonna keep on visiting some more camps and see how they do it for the At The Camp series. I'll see y'all at the next one.